Hello and a very good evening. Welcome to The Nightline. I'm Radzi Ahmad. And here with me again, Shaul Shamina. As always, it's a pleasure for you all to tune in to TVS Nightline tonight. Now on to the headlines. The Sarawak Petronas Agreement will bring plenty of employment opportunities in Sarawak. Now, Tupong Assemblyman Fazruddin Abdul Rahman was optimistic that the commercial settlement agreement between Sarawak and Petronas is the right move. According to him, the criticism levied by the opposition towards the agreement is akin to denying the efforts of the government to attain the right for Sarawak to get involved in the oil and gas industry. He added the commercial agreement signed on December 7 will enable Petroleum Sarawak Berhad or Petros to play a bigger role in the oil and gas industry. Through their cooperation with Petronas, vast employment opportunities will be created in Sarawak. He stressed that the Sarawak government will not rush any decisions and various factors will be taken into consideration so that the people can benefit from the many initiatives implemented. Right. Now, the Ministry of Transport Special Traffic Task Force has proposed five temporary and long-term steps to overcome traffic congestion throughout Kuching, Ranger Depot Road, Tapang River and Kuching Central. Sarawak Minister of Transport, Dato Lee Kim Shin, said the first recommendation is by placing traffic police during the peak hours on the junction at Depot Kuching Ranger Road and Kuching Airport Road in addition to allowing vehicles to exit from Depot Kuching Ranger Road to the end of the entry and exit road. The second recommendation is by modifying one out of four lanes from Syrian to Kuching at the Kuching Airport Junction to become a temporary road with concrete barriers. Next is to build an entrance and exit by passing the main road to facilitate the traffic flow from Syrian to Kuching through 4th Mile Road. Lee added, the fourth recommendation is to build connecting roads from Tapang River to the new roads that were approved in Samarahan. Tenders for this project will be open next year and funding for this project has been allocated by the federal government. Meanwhile, the fifth recommendation is to redesign Kuching Ranger Depot Road as an intersection and to install traffic lights to better organize the flow of traffic. Detailed studies will be performed to identify traffic problems and review all the utilities required. Sarawa has expanded its forest areas for the Heart of Borneo program, a collaborative effort between Malaysia, Indonesia and Brunei. Now, the forest areas which previously encompass 2.1 million hectares will be expanded to incorporate an area of 2.7 million hectares. The expansion will cover forest areas in Lundu slash Samatan in the southern part of the state to Limbang and Lawas districts in northern Sarawak. Dan uh, kita juga telah pun uh, memperluaskan lagi kawasan under Heart of Borneo program, from 2.1 million hectare to 2.7 million hectare. Dan kita juga memberi tumpuan kepada our uh, forest uh, planted uh, program dan uh, restoration, uh, forest restoration. Meanwhile, commenting on the National Park Management Plan, Dato Ama Awang Tengah Ali Hassan, who is also the Minister of Urban Development and Natural Resources, said that the Sarawak Forestry Department has also upgraded the management system of 41 gazetted national parks in the state. He said so far only 11 of the 41 national parks have their own management plans and the department seeks to implement management plans for three to four of its national parks every year. Meanwhile, Awang Tengah also added that the restructuring exercise of the State Forestry Department and the Sarawak Forestry Corporation, or SFC, has been implemented since January. This was to ensure effective forest management and wildlife control efforts. The State Forest Department, JHS, will intensify its enforce enforcement operations to combat illegal logging activities in the state. Now, this includes the public being proactive in providing information as it is the responsibility of all to combat illegal logging. 
Deputy Chief Minister Dato Ama Awang Tenga Ali Hassan noted that even though the overall situation was under control, it is undeniable that illegal logging was still happening in parts of the state. Tapi secara keseluruhannya uh, adalah terkawal. Memang tidak dinapikan ada berlaku berlaku di beberapa tempat. Tidak ada area yang uh, spesifik. Uh, Ia berlaku di uh, semua tempat, di semua tempat, berlaku di kawasan pendalaman, berlaku di tebing-tebing sungai, dalam kawasan sempadan pun berlaku. So, but uh, uh, we will uh, coordinate our operation. Uh, dan uh, ya, yang penting seperti yang saya katakan tadi ialah uh, kerjasama daripada masyarakat itu sendiri. He said this in a press conference after officiating the launching of JHS new headquarters and website at the Baitul Magmo building on Friday. In order to achieve zero illegal logging, the enforcement aspect will need to be intensified. Awang Tenga added that JHS had established the Sarawak Aerial Detection Unit to further enhance the initiative to contain illegal logging. Dalam masa COVID-19 ini pun, agensi-agensi kita bertindak. Ya, kalau melalui operasi-operasi kita, uh, yang kita buat, kita uh, pertingkatkan dan uh, uh, dengan kerjasama orang ramai, orang ramai juga harus memberi kerjasama bagi input dan uh, dan apa ni uh, information dan uh, dengan kerjasama itu maka kita akan mudah bertindak as of november 2020 79 cases of illegal logging have been investigated under the sarawak forest ordinance 2015 13 of which have been brought to court the cases involve 63 suspects while 57 transport vehicles and machinery were seized of the 79 cases, 40 were from operations conducted by JHS, 22 cases were from public tip-offs and 17 cases were referred to other enforcement agencies. In total, 18,826 cubic metres of logs of various species with government royalty due amounting to 1.9 million ringgit were seized in Sarawak between January and November 20 this year. The forest landscape restoration of FLR is widely promoted in Sarawak as a solution in reducing the global loss and degradation of forests. FLR yeah. ensures sustainable levels of greenery, landscape quality and environment that contributes to a quality of life that is healthy and harmonious. Sarawak Forest Department Director Datuk Hamden Mohamad said FLR focuses on managing, conserving and restoring the coastal forest ecosystem. This effort is to support the planting of mangrove trees and other mangrove species. About a thousand mangrove trees have been planted at the coastal area of Buntal. The FLR program has collaborated with Reforestation and Industrial Forest Division, Japan Malay Association, Kampong Buntal Village Development and Security Committee, and many other related agencies. The FLR implementation is in line with the planting campaign of 100,000 mangrove trees by the Ministry of Water, Land and Natural Resources. Now, the establishment of the Sarawak Coast Guard, or SCG, is a clear indication of the stability of the Sarawak government in maintaining the security of state waters. According to Sarawak State Secretary Datuk Amar Yao Samion, a total of 56 new SCG recruits have reported for duty and are now undergoing training to prepare for the launching of SCG early next year. SCG was formed with the goal to control and eliminate illegal and criminal activities carried out in the waters of Sarawak. He added, the role of the State Security and Enforcement Unit, also known as UKPN, is very important to ensure the current security of the state can be maintained. He also urged UKPN and other enforcers to continue performing their role in ensuring peace and security in the state.
28 residents and 55 non-governmental organizations in Lundu District, Sarawa, received over 187,000 ringgit in financial aid under the Sarawa Government's Minor Rural Project Grant or MRP. The aid is specifically meant for education and medical emergency assistance. Santubong MP Datok Siri Dr. Wan Junaidi Tunku Jafar said, education and health must be focused on specifically as they are both critical elements to ensure the people's prosperity. With regards to that, Wan Junaidi urged informal and petty traders to register their businesses with the relevant authorities. He said that there are almost 2 million unregistered informal and petty traders nationwide. Hence, traders would need to register their businesses so that the aid can be given through the proper channels. He also commented in a statement today that the ministry is concerned about the trader's situation, but due to the unregistered status, they are unable to channel any aid. Therefore, in order to receive various aid from MEDAC and its agencies, these traders are urged to register their businesses. A total of 43 Village Security and Development Committee, or JKKK, including the Kakus constituency, received minor rural project, or MRP, funds with an allocation of 1,063,000 ringgit. Now, this allocation aims to contribute to the development of longhouses in the area. <laughs> Jadi kita kena pindah ke kamera kita. Saya tu lagi kita lebih 42 ikut, eh, kena lebih 42 ikut kena terima cek ke satu juta enam puluh tiga ribu kekat dah terima pulgi. Jadi pula itu ngaji nak pada rumah kita, pada kaki raya rumah panjai kita. Datuk John Siki Tayai urged the Village Security and Development Committee or Village Chiefs who received the MRP funds to spread the word to the Longhouse community. This is to ensure that financial provisions given are managed with transparency. He also advised the people to elect a Village Chief with traits that reflect integrity and character who are trustworthy and responsible. Meanwhile, he also hopes that the funds allocated by the government will be increased as more longhouses are being built. Malaysia today recorded 1,937 new positive COVID-19 cases, taking the cumulative confirmed infections in the country to 82,246. Nine COVID-19 related deaths have also been reported today, bringing the tally to 411 deaths. Now, three new clusters have also emerged, and namely the Bukit Gamok Cluster, Tapak Bina Chandana Cluster, and Dang Mutiara Cluster. According to the Ministry of Health, a total of 13,751 people are still being treated, with 121 of them in the intensive care unit and 66 requiring respiratory assistance. Noor Hisham said only two of today's cases were imported. Selangor reported the highest number of cases today with 823, followed by Sabah with 429 and Kuala Lumpur with 238. Noor Hisham said most of the cases in Selangor were from existing clusters and close contact screenings. Of today's cases, 725 came from prison and temporary detention center clusters, namely the Jalan Harapan prison cluster with 565 cases, Rumah Merah with 112 cases, Tembok cluster with 43, and the Sebrang Parai prison cluster with 5 cases. Meanwhile, in Sarawak, the State Disaster Management Committee, also known as SDMC, recorded one new imported COVID-19 case in Kuching today. The new case brought the total number of positive cases in the state to 1,075. The case involves a local Sarawakian student returning from Kota Kinabalu who arrived in Kuching on December 11 via Kuching International Airport. On clusters, SDMC declared the end of Jalan Abel Cluster in Kuching, Living Besi Cluster, Green Hill Cluster and Wisma Sabarakas Cluster as the only ones remaining active. The world today reach, uh, reached a grim milestone of 70 million total COVID-19 cases. Now, according to figures from John Hopkins University, almost 1.6 million COVID-19-related deaths have also been reported. 
the United States remained the country with the highest number of deaths and cases, with almost 3,000 people dead and more than 15.7 million people contracting the disease. India and Brazil recorded the second highest and third highest tallies, respectively, recording 9.8 million and 6.8 million cases, respectively. The World Health Organization is expected to make a decision on whether to give emergency use approval to COVID-19 vaccines from Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca in the coming weeks. The Ministry of Communications and Multimedia, KKMM, remains committed to ensuring that the country's rural population is able to access telecommunications network facilities. This includes internet service that is equally as good as that enjoyed by people living in the city. Now, its Deputy Minister Dato Zahidi Zainul Abidin said that the ministry is currently discussing with telecommunications companies to solve issues related to the absence of telecommunications network facilities and address complaints received regarding the matter. Zahidi said people in rural areas are paying prepaid or postpaid bills at the same price as those in the city. He added that electricity supply disruption is one of the reasons telecommunications transmitters cannot function properly, thus disrupting the network. He also said generator sets were used to power telecommunication transmitters in areas without electricity, but there were situations where the gen sets were faulty, hence affecting the transmitters. Meanwhile, he said that KKMM would also focus on efforts to improve internet access at the country's borders, including in Padang Besar, as many of these areas are facing poor internet service. Now, the Malaysian Agricultural Research and Development Institute, or MARDI, today launched its Food Technology Innovations and the Technology Testbed Laboratory for the Malacca MARDI Station. Agriculture and Food Industry Deputy Minister Datuk Seri Ahmad Hamza said, the food innovation products are technologies to produce high antioxidant, mango fruit leather and fermented beverage products. These will be made from using underutilized fruits like the Terengganu cherry, Mangifera odorata, or kini and tea leaves. Elaborating further, Ahmad said the Mardi Technology Test Beds Laboratory is a food processing technology laboratory equipped with modern machines for small scale production or selected food products. He said the laboratory also offers processing facilities, expertise, and quality analysis services needed to initiate and manage technological and business innovation processes. According to Ahmad, the Testbed Laboratory is a one-stop center for entrepreneurs to acquire direct knowledge and technology advisory services. Ahmad hoped that entrepreneurs in the state would take advantage of the technologies introduced by Mardi to help improve Malacca's traditional enterprises. The National Farmers Organization, or NAFAS, distributed 5.31 million ringgit of the zakat allocation through Wakala to 26,550 Asnaf beneficiaries throughout the country this year. Now, Second Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Food Industries, Dr. Che Abdullah Madnawi, said the zakat was distributed by himself and through the Chairman of State Farmers Organization, or SFO, Area Farmers Organization, AFO. According to him, in addition to the zakat allocation, his ministry has allocated 580,000 ringgit for clothing assistance and school equipment to beneficiaries all over the country. Meanwhile, assistance in the form of 290,000 food baskets were provided to ease the burden of the family members of Asnaf. In regards to the Nafas Prihatin program, he said a total of 490,000 ringgit was channeled to repair homes throughout the country and ensure that poor families could live comfortably. He added a total of 1.395 million ringgit was also distributed to help NAFAS members affected by COVID-19 and of that total, 170,000 ringgit was given to 34 recipients with an average assistance of 5,000 ringgit per person. Now, the proposal to implement a pension scheme for old athletes who represented the country in the Olympics have been met with a positive reception. National athletes all over have praised the effort by the Ministry of Youth and Sports to gratify the contributions of Olympians, even if they have not won any medals. Um, secara, secara jujurnya, satu serangan yang baguslah sebab kami dan ini pun pun sebagai seorang Olimpian, memang uh, kami asal semua orang semua Olimpian uh, di luar di luar. 
di luar macam mengharapkan sesuatu lah macam something like ni sebab uh, kebanyakan nanti Olimpik tu dah banyak luangkan masa berlatih bukan 10 tahun tapi ada yang uh, 15 tahun ada yang 20 tahun dan ada yang lebih lagi daripada tu jadi cadangan uh, tu ialah salah satu benda uh, balasan ataupun reward kepada atlet-atlet um, atlet-atlet Olimpik di luar sana yang uh, atas pengobatan uh, mereka selama selama ini lah dalam sukan masing-masing. Um, sebagai bekas atlet negara tu, um, Kim tu uh, sangat bagus uh, sebab uh, ini akan menjadi satu penghargaan uh, kepada semua atlet Olimpian yang pernah mengharumi nama negara dan menaikkan nama negara. Meanwhile, Olympic diver Leong Moon Yi said the pension scheme will be able to motivate all future athletes to reach their full potential in their respective sports. Moon Yi, who will be making her fifth Olympic appearance at the Tokyo Olympics in July next year, said if the proposed pension scheme was approved, it would accord proper recognition to Olympians who might have excelled at other world-class events but failed to win medals. The pension proposal was also received positively by the Malaysian Olympians Association, or MOA, who said such a scheme will ensure that a career as an elite athlete is a sustainable choice for Malaysian sporting talents. Discovering and nurturing new talents in judo as well as producing world-class athletes. Now that is the main goal of Sarawak Judo Association for opening a new branch in Kota Sentosa. According to the chairman of Sarawak Judo Association, or SJA Nyam Se Yung, the club will focus on recruiting and training potential athletes in the sport for future Sukma Games. Our main purpose of setting up this branch is to looking for our future athletes, especially the Sukma player. So when we have a Sukma player like, like uh, Brenton beside me, he's uh, developed from just a normal um, student to a Sukma player, gold medalist, then to our national medalist, gold medalist, then to SEA Games player. So he has been constituted uh, two times um, SEA Games representative for, for Malaysia. So this is part our aim in, in the future, we can develop um, more national players from uh, Sarawak and become the powerhouse of uh, judo in Meanwhile, with regards to maintaining judo training during the COVID-19 pandemic, students were asked to train on their own during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, actually, Majlis Sukan Negeri, they have given us a set of training programs to, to follow that we uh, acquired our players to do it from home. Then they have to take videos and send it to our, our coaches group so we can monitor on their movements and all their, their training pro, uh, I mean training. For the record, the highest achievement for Sarawak's Seoul Judoka in the SEA Games held in Manila was Brenton Sim Yi Chen, who had also won a gold medal during Sukma 2011. It's the nightline for today. Thank you for joining us. I am Radzi Ahmad. And of course, here with me, Shell Chamina. And thank you for joining, joining, joining us tonight. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. Stay safe. Bye-bye.